Hello everyone, it's Chris and welcome back to Something Else Amiga. So, I have a recent Amiga haul I'm going to share with you guys. This comes to us from Wisconsin. The story is this. I'm not going to share too much of the owner's personal details. I was contacted by Mr. Dale about some stuff and I have it. Okay? And, uh... He just left a little while ago. He delivered it because he was on his way to an event in Eastern PA. So he kind of took a thousand mile trip and stopped over on the way and saves on shipping. In the haul was an Amiga 1200, Amiga 2000, Amiga 3000, and a 1080 monitor in the box. No, in its box. Uh, I have the box of the 2000, which I'm going to show you right here. So this is a box for an Amiga 2000. You can see it's slightly large because the machine's slightly large. Inside, I'm trying to do this to share, the original foam bag and even the desiccant bag was still in there. Here's the 2000's face. I popped the lid off. I think she's a Rev 4 because of that big lettering. Fingerprints. Very few. Okay, Remember what I was telling you about fingerprints? Um, it looks like there's baby feet in here. It's not fingerprints. Some child walked on here. It's got children's footprints. Uh, I don't know. But children's footprints. Let's see if they actually come off. I'm going to just hit it with some Windex. Let it sit for a second. I'm going to let it soak in. The... 2000 came with a 2286 bridge board, the manual face plate or face ripped off, the Amiga Basic manual, and Amiga Transformer. Looks like a 1.3 thing with a book, kind of like the Textcraft Plus. Inside it says using popular IBM PC software with your Amiga. Amiga Transformer, the warranty card, and all about it. We're going to check that out. This will go nicely with my Textcraft Plus boxed set. Make a transformer hard, hard box. Also in there was the original 1.3 Amiga DOS Kickstart. The 2286 bridge board uh, manual with its sub manual inside. If I can get it out. There's some printed papers. And the Amiga 3000 book. What? Yes. Uh, I have finally the Amiga 3000 book. I have the 3000 Tower book. Also, there's a guide for Amax. Amax is not in here, but at one time he had an Amax card and I had the book for it. Amax 2. And now the neat part. Amiga DOS Developer's Manual. Amiga DOS Technical Reference Manual. Amiga DOS User Manual. Awesome. And even better... Oh, God. This is like a telephone book. That's a book where we listed all phone numbers of businesses back in the 80s. Amiga ROM kernel reference manual, libraries and devices. She's a beast. It was $34.95 from Commodore Business Machines Publishing in 1986. June 1986 for this book. Awesome. Now we also have the Commodore hardware reference manual. Every function, address line. Now, a lot of this is for programming, bit planes, weight positions, coprocessor hardware, your intuition reference manual, all the mouse keyboard, the subsystems, input output requesters, everything to do with that. And finally, the Amiga Crom Kernel reference manual, exec from CBM, all about exec, its commands everything. I wish there was a way I could digitize these and save them online. Let me wipe the baby feet out of here and see what we get. So let's see what we get here. It is making some headway. Nope, we have etched in baby feet. So baby feet will be this 2000's name. I'm gonna move this to the side and I'm gonna grab the beast itself. This is the Amiga 2000. It has two FB354 floppies. It has this 
something and a RAM card. It is heavy. Burning Westchester passed. This always falls off. Red light means she's a Rev 4. No! No! And you know what we're going to have to check. Okay, the first time I've ever seen this done. The extra serial port that's on the board is actually in use. Down here, see that cable? That's a header for a serial port. There it is from an AST computer. So we're going to remove the power from the floppies. And I'm going to pull the floppy cable. Oh my god, these are hard as rocks. 30 years, guys. Pull the power supply out. And you know this is going to be hell, death, Oh, cheese and rice. So yeah, she is jacked up big time. Rev 4 with a Varda still in the barrel. And she is green as the swamp. Look at the angle of attack there. See that brightness? Oh yeah, she's done for. We have a hard drive controller. C Limited. It says right here, C Limited. Has no screws, two transceivers, two PALs, and whatever this is, I can't even read it. Various fingerprints, the only thing it says C2-IF 1987, C Limited by Breck Ricketts. Commodore A2500, two megabyte of RAM card. Mr. Q would like to have that. This is the original 2500 RAM card, two meg. Look at the resistor pack they soldered on the back there. That's a lot of chips for two megs of RAM. But, it was the 80s. That's what we had to do. Oh, God. Okay. So she has been touched a couple of times. Just a couple times. That is one spicy meatball. It's got me questioned. I'm sure you want to see too. This has got to be one of the worst shells I've seen for fingerprints. Look at that. There's no shine left. That's what your fingerprints do. Acid, because it's leaked down underneath. What's she look like? Not bad. Not bad. The battery post survived and she just shits out on everything else. Let's get her out of here. So, what you've all been waiting for, for this moment. Oh, God. She's crusty. Get out. Get out. Get out. So there we go. We got our work cut out for us. Yep, I'm gonna have to vinegar this. But for now, it's gonna soak her down, let her sit, and we'll get on to the next thing. If you can't see inside of this slot, you can see it's green. CPU is green. You can see a little cleanness. Well, clean cleanness, what's that word? There's some cleanness up here. These are all look good, but inside the, it eats some Oreos and smile, and that's what it looks like down in that hole. So, uh, the traditional Rev4 RAM lines and uh, bus lines, data lines, look like death. But, I've had some surprises with these little guys in the past where what looks horrid isn't as horrid as you think. We're just going to soak it down, paint that picture. This is an Amiga 1200. That is the camouflage edition for Operation Desert Storm. That's the color it's supposed to be. And that's the color it is. I know nothing about this. It's heavy, so it probably has a hard drive in it. Uh, let's crack open her belly and see what's in the hole. It's heavy. Maybe it's got a power PC in there. It's got nothing. <laughs> uh, this is a US NTSC A1200. Serial number 530311. This hadn't been turned on since at least the 90s. It's still got the plastic sticker on it. I'm ignoring everything because, you know, what? it breaks. I know a guy that can fix them. Well, attempt to. And uh, let's see what happens, okay? I mean, I just hit it. 
Oh my god. It's firing up. Hard drive. Give that a, a holler. In this pile o discs was a super kickstart for the Amiga 3000, which we're going to get into in a second. Workbench 1.3, Workbench 204, install, install 204, two copies of 204, another 1.3, Amiga Extras, Amiga 3000 series install disc, that's the kickstart. Amiga Workbench 2, Amiga 2000, okay, so I don't have any 1200 3.0 discs. But that's okay. Okay, enough of that. I'm not getting into it. There's one more coup de gras on this puzzle. So Amiga 1200, Desert Storm Edition. It's rare. Here is the pimp of the 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 hall. This. This is an Amiga 3000, 25 megahertz. Had a faceplate, it's not there, has one floppy drive. It is yellow on the front, the faceplate cover is missing, so that's why this is the way it is. On the back, well, number one, it has its original screws, and look at these feet. They're still rubbery, they're not bubble gum. On the back, we have a port opening thing for I don't know, and I see a board in there and it smells really bad. She's heavy. Slide the cover off, what do we see? Oh, wow. January 4th, 1991 birth date, look at that. Not a finger! Dust and that's it. That is epic. Epic. Holy Christmas. This has never been touched. I'm not looking around there yet. It has the screw bag. What's the screw bag? The screw bag came in all 3000s when you wanted to put DF1 in. They taped screws to the thing. So you'd have the screws and it still has the it still has the felt. I don't know why. There's no freaking airflow on a 3000 anyway. So it's not like it wasn't going to suck air because there's nothing to suck air in. This is where I was corrected on my 3000 assemblies online. You guys saw that Facebook post. I always put my screw in backwards because I put this piece on the outside. It's supposed to go on the inside. I'm just stupid. Learn something new every day. It has a quantum, uh, I don't know what size drive. The cable's here for the DF1. And the drive itself. Let's, I know what you want to see. We're going to rotate this pizza around by just picking it up. And I don't believe what I'm seeing. Do you see that? That's a GP. You can see the GP on the, right here. GP. There's no damage. Praise Jesus! This is a Commodore bridge board. It's a 2286, so 286 with its I.O. board. Gadget just did one. I sent him one in the past just to say, here you go. I like to share the wealth. And uh, let's get this cookie out of here. Not a nothing. Zilch. Zero. Nothing. Holy crap. Yeah, I cut my nose, by the way. I'm sorry. I have a red mark here. I was shaving in, in the shower and I sliced the tip of my nose off. So I look like Santa, or I look like Rudolph. My apologies. Getting old. After all this time, there's no way. There's no freaking way in the world this is going to have current. Can you see that? Yeah, maybe. Let's see. Let's see what we see. One zero. Negative in the front. Negative in the front. 0.056. Volts, so it's a 3.6 volt rechargeable battery. It's got 0, 0.0, and that's why it didn't leak. 0 0.06. All original caps, showy Elna, and I guarantee you, I could. I'm gonna clip it. Okay, we're gonna clip it right now because I can't risk it. I just don't want 
Take a chance. She's too perfect. There we go. Look at that. So let's take a peek at this battery. I uh, just caught her legs, so let's fold her back down and not cut my finger in half. Well, I'll do my best. There we go. So, nothing. Nothing. Incredible. GP, you guys are the true saviors of Amigas. Well, you shouldn't even have been in here. I guarantee you it's going to be wet if I slice her casing, but we're just going to add her to the pile of death up here in the corner. Five, six of them back there now. And probably three or four that fell on the floor. We're going to test this pickle. I don't care. If it breaks, again, I know a guy that can fix them. Let's see what happens. We'll spin the old propeller for good luck. Turn the power on first might help. Here we go. We got nothing. Nothing. Toast. Well, too good to be true. Ugh. Come here, girl. I need you for a second. All right. Yeah. We have nothing. Always keep a spare. This one works, so we're going to use it. Now let's see what happens. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot to plug the... Uh, what am I doing? I forgot to plug the hard drive in. It doesn't matter. Let's, let's just... Why am I turning this one on? See what I did? Let's see. Energize. No floppies, no scuzzy, 3,000 freaks out, 2.0 ROMs, holy crap, we have a working Amiga, dead power supply, but working Amiga, incredible, holy crap, incredible, it works, I didn't doubt the board was going to work based on its condition, hard drive, I don't know, this power supply is dead, but I have a spare, ouch, and I will use it in this unit or why the battery was good because something popped and I think something popped was either the fuse in the power supply or one of the doohickeys that make it all possible but in order to get this out I gotta take the tray out and do all the other stuff too and I'm not doing that right now quantum uh, pro drive unknown scuzzy thick big and yeah so you can put mean wells inside of these and rewire them. You got to find a mean well with a, a negative uh, five volt though. So twelve, negative twelve, five, negative five. All right, Daddy. And let's see what happens. Holy crap! All right, watch right here. Can you see that? See the light? Watch. It's probably just bad caps. We're gonna tank this thing and. Put it in the old hot tank. So, replacement power supply. Here's the original mouse. This cable feels a little brittle. So we're going to have to soften her up with some oils. Give her a rub down. Clean her up. Retro braid it. The pregnant mouse is by far, I've said it a hundred times, the best Amiga mouse there is. If you've ever used one. And hitting it. Hard drive spins. Hard drive blinks. I'm about to rebuild that power supply. I didn't plug in the floppy, but the hard drive is booting. Holy crap. It's got all sorts of stuff loading. Oh, the, the PC. There's a, oh God. So, there is IBM partition, there's DH0, there's Make Make, there's Amax, there's Click DOS, Workbench 2, PC Color, that was the card. You know what? It's set up for it. Let's do it. Only Amiga, baby. It's got a trucking program, Stockcom, DH0, is, a, is 39 megs and it's 97% full. Had an Amax 2, Platinum Works, P Page, TurboText. Draw, Project, Super Base, Basic, Amiga Vision, Final Copy, True Basic, Games, Shanghai, 
Uh, music, it had Audio Master Sorex, DMOS, and some mods. LC, I don't know what that is. Word Perfect is a drawer that nothing, and Kind Words, a drawer that couldn't be open. And Deluxe Paint 4. The National Weather Service just issued a tornado warning for me. That was called File Vision. Trucking Program. It's going to load Super Bass Pro. Let's see what it is, if this contains any personal information. Okay, so I had to cut some of that. That has a full, it's D-Base Pro, it has a full-blown program with invoicing for a moving company back in the 90s. Last date of entry was uh, January 95. It said next bill due. So this was used up until 95. Let's flip Amber down. I'm in Amber, VGA mode. Oh, look at that. 31 kilohertz works. Amax is not going to work. We're going to run PC Color. I didn't hear it beep. The card is in there. I don't know if the card still works. Dallas real-time clock is most likely dead. Was it control alt escape? Or this is just that slow? I don't know. Oh crap, I know what that drive is for then. Okay, there was this drive. And this thing was opened up. This with its goofy plug, look at that, fits right into this thing, right? It was like this, pin one, right into that, and here's a five and a quarter inch disc with an external plug for a power supply. If that power supply hadn't failed, this would have lived on, that battery would have barfed, and I'd have had a really bad repair. There you go, PC mono battery failure, that's why we couldn't get the color. So the brake board works, boot failure. Luckily I have a Dallas real-time clock, Brand new. I have to take a small thunderstorm break. Had to turn all the solar stuff off because everything just glitched out. This is the final box I just picked up. And... Whew, it's heavy. This is an Amiga 1080 monitor box. I need to get this out of here. It's holding my spin ability up. Amiga 1080 color monitor. Philadelphia, made in Japan. High resolution color monitor. Color, C -O -L -O -O -C -O -L -O -R. we didn't have a U here in America. Inside of this pack package is the monitor. Still on her phone and her wrapped thing. There she is. Let me get it off this table and we'll take the foam out and we'll take a peek. Now, this is not new. It's not NIB. May 1986. It's in analog RGB mode, RGB input, power, chroma video, audio, bada bing, vertical height adjustment, NTSC. 120 volt, 60 hertz. Made in Japan, very nice. Now, here's a cool thing. This is an Amiga 1080 monitor. Notice the check mark badge. Here's a neat weird thing. Here's my Amiga 1000. Notice something different? Cool, huh? This is the Boing Ball edition. It's a 1080. Can't back up any further. And matching keyboard. Does this work? I don't know. Does it need Windex? Yes, it does. It still has the bottom panel on it. That would look nice sitting on top of that 3000, but it's not what she's for. That, ladies and gentlemen, has been another Amiga haul. About a thousand miles on this jobber, and it was delivered to save me some shipping just because the owner, uh, the original owner, had a trip to make and just said, I can just deliver it. So epic thank you so much for that. We're going to get everything. We're going to make it look like new again. That 3000 is epic. Didn't know you take a gamble. Don't know. Hadn't been opened. Nothing's been opened, I was told. Nothing's been opened in 30 years. So I figured they're toast. All right, here we go. By the luck of a bad power supply 20, 30 years ago, this 3000 has been 
epically saved. So that's going to be an easy one for me. 1200 I don't know. I might leave it Desert Storm. kind of like it. It's different, you know. It's, yes, it is brown, but it's white also. It kind of looks like a Desert Storm sand camouflage, you know. I don't know. Comment down below and let me know what you think. It's kind of wild how this did that. Maybe there was something sitting on it in random spots over the years, but I might leave it like this. I have a white 1200 right there. So, stay tuned for future videos on these repair projects and more coming up shortly. Thank you guys for coming along on this journey. Until next time, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Funny, you bastard.